everyone welcome back to my channel this is again jewelry kermi today we're stepping back in time as we explore the rich history and hidden gems of manila's historic heart intramuros from centuries old churches to secret gardens with stories untold join me on this journey through the cobblestone streets of the walled city make sure to hit the subscribe button and buckle up for a captivating tour of intramuros like you've never seen before let's dive into the past and unravel the wonders within these ancient walls Ready? Let's go! Hello! <laughs> Mabuhay! Mabuhay, Philippines! We are at the Intramuros for a day tour. Can you say Mabuhay? Mabuhay! This way to the Baluarte de San Francisco Javier. During World War II, it also became a prison cell for higher ranking officials of the Philippine government. One of our president, Alpecho Moreno, uh, was imprisoned here uh, for 16 days. This is the actual defense wall. The Baluarte de San Francisco Javier in Intramuros, Manila is a historical site known for its role in the defense of the walled city during the Spanish colonial period in the Philippines. It's interesting to note that it was originally designed to house artillery and soldiers, showcasing the strategic military architecture of the time. Constructed in the late 18th century, the Baluarte de San Francisco Javier served as part of the defensive system of Intramuros. The Baluarte or Bastion was strategically positioned to protect the landward side of the city. Over the years, it has witnessed significant events, making it a tangible link to Manila's rich history and the challenges it faced during various periods of colonial rule. The height of this wall is 22 feet. The peak is 8 feet. This what way? is this? Yeah, this way. We're going down? Yeah. Just be careful. Built in 1990. The river near Fort Santiago in Intramuros is the Pasig River. An interesting fact is that the Pasig River was once a vital waterway for trade and transportation during the Spanish colonial period. Hello! <laughs> what can you say about the tour so far? Very good. We're learning really? a lot of things. This is a this is a handmade river. Is that for real? <laughs> man-made. Man-made man river. <laughs> I don't know how you say it in English. Handmade river. Handmade. <laughs> okay. Well. The two walls with cannons near Fort Santiago in Intramuros have historical significance. One of these walls is likely part of the defensive fortifications that protected Intramuros during the Spanish colonial period. These walls, often adorned with cannons, were strategic elements in the city's defense against potential invaders. During that era, Fort Santiago itself served as a military stronghold and the surrounding walls with cannons were essential components of the defensive system. The cannons were strategically placed to deter and repel attacks, showcasing the military architecture of the time. These walls and cannons stand as silent witnesses to the tumultuous history of Intramuros, witnessing battles, conflicts, and the changing landscape of Manila over centuries. Today, they contribute to the area's historical charm and serve as reminders of the city's resilience and rich heritage. Hi, my mga isda. Yan mo, isda ba yan? I love ya. You know, isda. May ano actually dyan yo. May prison cell dyan na sa ilalim. Tapos pag nagkakaitay, hindi mga prison cell. Madudungawan na lang. Oo. Pag nagkakaitay, tumataas yung tubig. Tapos doon nalulunod yung mga kakaitay. Ah, ganun yung, ganun yung ano, pang torture na ginagawa. Wow. 
Plaza de Armas inside Fort Santiago holds historical significance as the main square of this iconic fortress. A fun fact is that it served various purposes throughout history, including military drills and ceremonies during the Spanish colonial period. Today, the plaza stands as a tranquil space, inviting visitors to stroll through its historic grounds, offering a glimpse into the past and the changing roles of the significant square within Fort Santiago. The Kingdom of Rasulima. Long before the Spaniards arrived, uh, the Philippines were living harmoniously. They were living quietly. Nobody invaded the Philippines yet. Uh, this is uh, one of the kingdoms back in the days, uh, the Kingdom of Rasulima. Uh, when we were occupied by the Spaniards, uh, this place was converted into a fort uh, with seven, uh, with a huge wall. Before the, before the performance in the huge stage in this area. So they gathered actually some students to learn how to uh, act and learn how to uh, uh, perform. Uh, this is for the stage performers. Raha Sulaiman, a Muslim chieftain and leader of Manila before the Spanish colonization, resisted the Spanish forces led by Miguel Lopez de Legazpi. After the defeat of the native forces in 1570, Sulaiman was captured and eventually executed. His name is associated with the resistance against Spanish colonization. While Fort Santiago itself is more closely tied to the Spanish colonial period, Raja Sulaiman's resistance and the subsequent changes in leadership are part of the historical narrative that unfolded in the area that is now Intramuros. <laughs> Hello, my mission is to save the world, help kids around the <laughs> and world. And to implement successfully Transcend Program. <laughs> and to implement successfully Transcend Program. Yes. <laughs> My mission. Come closer. My mission. Come closer. Fort Santiago has a fascinating history. One intriguing fact is that national hero Jose Rizal, who played a key role in the Philippines' fight for independence, was imprisoned in Fort Santiago before his execution in 1896. The site now features a shrine, a museum dedicated to Rizal, commemorating his contributions to the Philippine independence. Madam, this is a former, uh, former set of the and Santa Isabel, the exclusive for the girls, yeah, 1632 is destroyed in 1945. This is a memory in Manila, 1945, this is a more than 100,000. Our next stop is the Memorari Manila 1945, specifically honors the civilian victims of the Battle of Manila, one of the most devastating urban conflicts during World War II. The monument stands as a tribute to the estimated 100,000 Filipino civilians who lost their lives during the battle. The inclusion of a grieving woman and child in the sculpture adds a deeply emotional and human dimension to the commemoration emphasizing the toll that war took on innocent lives in Manila. Hi, we are in the Hi, Carla. Hi, Ms. Jo. The native or uh, the native. like and subscribe. <laughs> the native. <laughs> <laughs> the local of Manila. Our 
Our next stop is Casa Manila located in Intramuros. It is a museum that provides a glimpse into the colonial lifestyle during the Spanish era in the Philippines. This article doesn't matter to remind servants that there are good guests. A fun fact is that the furniture, art, and decor inside Casa Manila are not original to the house. Instead, they were collected from various ancestral homes across the country, creating a carefully curated representation of the colonial period's affluent lifestyle. Casa Manila was built in the 1980s as a replica of a Spanish colonial era house. The attention to detail in its construction is remarkable, as it was designed to capture the architectural style and ambience of an upper-class residence during the 19th century. Visitors can explore the well-preserved rooms, courtyards, and exhibits providing a vivid experience of what life was like for the elite during the Spanish colonial period in the Philippines. We are now dining at Barbara's Heritage Restaurant in Intramuros, that is known for providing a cultural and culinary experience. The restaurant is housed in a historic building and is recognized for its colonial era ambience, like cultural performances and traditional Filipino cuisine. It often hosts cultural shows featuring traditional dances, adding an extra layer of entertainment to the dining experience. Next is St. Augustine Church in Intramuros, Manila. It is not only the oldest stone church in the Philippines, but it's also the only structure left standing in Intramuros after World War II. Despite the widespread destruction in the area during the war, St. Augustine Church miraculously survived, adding to its historical significance as a resilient symbol of the country's enduring cultural and religious heritage. Religious activities, uh, churches are also serves as a cemetery. Uh -huh. Yeah, we have a cemetery here. So, do you feel anything? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not feeling anything. Oh my God, this is a cemetery. Oh, so, uh, wow. such a nice cemetery. <laughs> 1947. <laughs> So nice. Guys, we are at a cemetery. The museum itself primarily focuses on showcasing religious artifacts, arts, and exhibits related to the St. Augustine Church's history. Within the St. Augustine Museum, you can find a unique collection of religious art dating back to the Spanish colonial period. Notably, it includes intricately carved ivory statues of saints, centuries-old religious vestments, and antique liturgical objects. This extensive array of artifacts provide a tangible connection to the cultural and religious practices that shaped the Philippines during the colonial era, offering visitors a deeper understanding of the country's historical and artistic heritage.
collection includes not only religious artifacts, but also colonial era furniture, paintings, and other items from different periods, creating a comprehensive display of the Philippines' cultural and historical heritage. Ito ko yung Ay, ano no yung nasira nitong recent na earthquake. Oo, yung pa-white. Diba anong anong ano mo gesture mo? Diba may mga arat na. Ay, wala akong ganun ganyan din. Hindi ako ganun. Wala wala nga no na lang. Gusto mo gumawa na para sa akin? Kasi easy pa pala ito. Baka may mga ano ako. Hindi na minaw basta utak ko. Kaya ina natin brain ana natin. Brainstorm. Brainstorm. Ah, diyan sila mag ano mag Diyan sa inyo bang may music? Ah, dito yung pang choir, no? Kaya niya mga choir. Taray. The museum features a stunning trampoline ceiling painted by Italian artists. The ceiling gives the illusion of a dome, adding a grand and artistic touch to the interior. Ah, pipe organ. Carla, it's called pipe organ. The pipe organ. You're having fun with me, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go to. I'm also a tourist here. And then I'll say hi to my vlog. That's what I was expecting actually, that you would be looking at. Hey. How are you? I'm good, thank are you. you? Okay, I hope fine. I still have energy for <laughs> bowling. <laughs> Our last stop here in Intramuros is the Baluarte de San Diego. It is one of the bastions or baluartes that once formed part of the defensive walls of Intramuros. It served as a military outpost during the Spanish colonial period, providing protection against potential invasions. The garden within the Baluarte features a diverse collection of plants and flowers. The landscaping adds an aesthetic appeal to the site, creating a peaceful environment for those who visit. The Baluarte showcases Spanish military architecture with its thick stone walls and strategic positioning to defend against attacks. It reflects the engineering and design principles of the time. My new supporter. Over the years, Baluarte de San Diego has undergone restoration and adaptive reuse. It has been transformed into a beautifully landscaped garden, maintaining some of its historical elements while providing a serene space for visitors. Recognized as a national cultural treasure by the National Museum of the Philippines, Baluarte de San Diego is an integral part of the country's cultural heritage. It is open to the public, allowing visitors to explore its historical and picturesque surroundings. Say hi to my vlog. How are you enjoying so far? Are you enjoying? So good, very much. I love nice. walking. I like the view. It's amazing. Yeah, it's so amazing. Beautiful. <laughs> okay, I think we're good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right.
As we wrap up this incredible day of exploring the historic wonders of Intramuros and banding through strikes, spares, and karaoke hits, I want to extend a huge thank you for joining the adventure with me. If you found a favorite moment in Intramuros or had a good laugh during our bowling and karaoke banding, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the like button, share this video with your fellow explorers and friends, and if you haven't already, subscribe for more adventures. Stay tuned because there's always more to discover, more laughter to share, and more memories to create. Until next time, keep exploring, keep bonding, and keep making every moment an unforgettable one. This is again Jory Kermi. Until our next video, bye!